and hello, Blast Process viewers, for a little small Halloween impromptu comics special. And for that, I'm going to get a few things from my library. And the first thing I'm going to get is this. Yes, The Monster Club. It is a British horror movie, comedy horror movie, what do you call it? Or kind of tongue-in-cheek. And this comic adaption, well, it's kind of a strange comic adaption in a way, because it was done before the film. It's one of the 100 copies uh, reprinted by Dead Skin. You organised, actually, edited and adapted the film. Because at the time, well, <laughs> there was a script and no film. And this was originally created by Amicus Films in order to promote the Monster Club, I think at Cannes Film Festival. So, in effect, this comic adaption storyboarded the movie. And the full story of this, well, is so on Desi's page. I'll put a link to that, to this actual story, because he'll tell you better than me, and I'm not stealing his thunder. So there you go, a comic adaption for a film at the time it didn't exist. And, oh, here's the legendary striptease artist who takes the skin off and uh, becomes that uh, I think a silhouette sequence in the movie. But it's a rather nice thing to have because oh, I'll show you the full cover, shall we? There we go. There's the full cover. Now, Des was asked to do this because he is, apart from being British comic industry, past, present and probably the future, the person behind House of Hammer, who later became, in the final issues, The Halls of Horror, which is probably another story best left for other people to say. Now this issue is the Unseen issue 24, because the previous run, they went up to 23. So this final issue, 40 odd years after the fact, was a very popular magazine at newsstands, because it allowed people who were not suitably age appropriate to see Hammer movies in the cinema. And let's face it, Hammer films aren't particularly grotesquely grotesque. They're sort of, I can't even think of the words, pantomime -y. They're of a type, they're of an atmosphere, they're of a look. You know, it's all crushed velvet and fog. Um, and any other people out there who play Castlevania games, well, I think they owe a little bit to Hammer films. So anyway, this is issue 24, the unseen issue 24 which was a limited thing that Des did to, well, fulfil a, a promise, because he was doing an index on the final issue, and if you had the binder, you got a slot for this. And also you had the comic adaption of The Bride of Dracula, illustrated by John Stokes. And I must say, that John Stokes is a far a nice man. I met him once at a Screaming Misty, or Misty and Scream signing, depending on which one you got from Rebellion. And uh, whilst talking to him, he gave me this piece. It's here, which I thought was a print at first, due to the sheer quality of the work and the penmanship. And it's actually from... Oops. Oh, sorry about the wobbling of the camera. I'm getting a shot. Great Expectations adaption. So they've got Pip and Magwitch. And he dedicated it, which I must admit I felt a bit... Poor, bad about that because he was vandalizing the art. Particularly, I found out this is an original piece of art he just gave me. Because um, there's no work, there's no blue work, there's no pencil lines. It's when you get a look at it in daylight and you see all the sequential black lines forming the circle and the little hole of the compass point. And that's a lovely thing and a lovely gesture from a man who was dressed up in his uh, uh, proper suit and tie. Unlike us uh, nerdy wells who are dressed in t-shirts and jeans. <laughs> so it was a very nice moment, a nice gesture of the man. But back on track again. Because we've looked at that. Which leads us on to this. This is a hardback collection. The House of Hammer The Collection by Deskin Skin and Friends. A quality publication. And this reprints all 24 issues. Well, the comic strips from the issues, we say, in one volume in quality paper. So there's the front. Let's bring it over to the back. And you can see the covers, etc. And a bit of a shout out now before I forget. 
there's the covers again by showing you the spine which is picked out in red foil with red foil and black it's a rather nice look and quite appropriate just seems right doesn't it now within we get the reprinted comic adaptions plus censorship looking how things change on the fly and each story is bookended with a look at the covers uh, some features uh, the movie poster a little bit of editorial recollections this says des and editors recollections and the great and the good of the british comic industry produced these okay that's brian barland you can tell straight away and it's page upon page of it apart from only that your cello or cell celluloid even this is as close as you're going to get now i'm, a, I'm quite a fan of the hammer interpretations of the Quatermass stories. Uh, there's a sound by Barbara Shelley and Sheila Stifle. And Quatermass in the Pit is the one they didn't do. Because Quatermass 1 and 2 are in here. Let's go towards the end here. The boo. We can't find it. I need to choose another section. Yeah, Quatermass 2. David Lloyd. Now, I met David Lloyd and he did a rather nice sketch for me of Andrew Keir and the Martian rocket. And in addition, Paul McCaffrey did a bit of framing above it. It helped sell the shot. And while he was there, there's a blank page at the front. And I'm thinking, what should you put on it? An illustration from a film in particular? A character? You know, what can I choose? And me being me, and having a strange sense of humour, and a strange mind, asked, and you very kindly gave him a picture of Kate Bush. As you see her in the video for Hammer Horror. Or you can say as wow, I suppose. And uh, I know Des liked it, because I put it on his Facebook page. By the way, links to things, the various things I've mentioned will be in the description below. Okay. So, where to next? That's a good question. Right, I know. Moving on from Deskin, I know that's very hard. One last thing I've got, this must come in the post, this last week, was from IDW. Yes, the American publisher. Power shot there. Strangely enough, in the box, around protecting the book I'd ordered, was a copy of My Little Pony, which is probably the scariest thing you're going to see on Halloween. So I'll take that away. Sorry about that. Also in there, protecting it, free comic book day version of Yusaki Yojimbo. I quite like that. Dan Saki. Met, I'm, met him. Nice chap. So what was ordered? Well, how about the colour version of From Hell, the Master Edition, by Ed, Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell. Now, unlike, say, the uh, House of Hammer collection, I'm not flipping through this one. It's a little bit more, shall we say, on the edge. So we won't go there. Needless to say, though, there was a reason for this one, because it's the New York Comic Con edition with a signed book plate. So Eddie Campbell and a little sketch. So that was quite nice when that turned up. This is last weekend, of all things. Well, thank you for watching. Um, all I can say is you've, you made it to the end of the video, so congratulations. And I'll enjoy your Halloween on this. It's a full moon tonight. I believe it's a blue moon, which means that's, a, that's the second full moon of the month. And I think the first time in, since 1944 that the whole world gets to see a full moon on the same night. Well, there you go. Or well, So I'm led to believe. Well, thank you for watching again. Um, enjoy your Halloween. I'll just put all these here. So you get to see all this stuff. And thanks for watching. And bye for now. Thank you.